Hey friends, it's Pastor Kofi Darte here. Today's message is gonna bless you and meet you right at the point of your need. We believe that the Word of God transforms, it changes, it brings us to a new level of destiny. And so I want you to buckle up, sit right there, and get excited for this Word. Amen. I wanna speak from a collection of talks for the next couple of weeks from the topic I entitled, Remember Your Chains. Remember Your Chains. Next week we'll have our Easter production. It's called New Wine and we're excited. It's going to be a movie-like, cinematic, it's gonna be incredible. It's called New Wine, that's next week. But tonight I want us to be able to begin our collection of talks from the topic, Remember Your Chains. Can you just type that, Remember Your Chains? Just type that up on your screen, Remember Your Chains. Thank you so much, band. You guys are amazing. The Bible uh, begins to allow us to come into contact with a man by the name of Saul, who on the road to Damascus was now changed and his name became Paul. The Bible is clear to say that he was encountered by, um, by could you just help me? I'm so sorry. Thank you. That, that progression is just stirring something in me. Thank you so much. Yayo. Um, the Bible is very clear uh, when it begins to say that he was on his way to Damascus, and as he was on his way to Damascus, the Bible says that there a light from heaven shone down on him and instantly he heard the voice of the Lord and the Lord said, why are you persecuting me, Saul? And he says that, hey, I want you to go to this street and on the straight street, you're going to meet a man by the name of Ananias. He's a disciple of mine and you're going to be with him. You'll be blind for a few, but afterwards you will go back and you will begin to preach the gospel and say that thus saith the Lord. And I find it very peculiar that in moments where we don't believe that the Lord has an eye on us, he still has his eye on us. And I don't know if you're out there tonight, but the Lord has always had his eye on you. And maybe this is your word tonight that I tune into this. I've been watching this I've been a Christian but I've forgotten that the Lord's eye is on me I want you to know something not only is his eye on you but his heart has always been for you and in this moment what's going to happen is many of you are going to begin to feel the presence of the Lord very strong I even see three people now you're on the floor right now and you're crying out to God because you're saying Lord you've forgotten about me but the Lord says that I've always remembered you even though you were in your worst state I always had a position and I had a purpose for you for Jeremiah 29 11 says that even now you are being called for a hope and a future I have greater things planned for you says the word of the Lord and the Bible begins to speak to us about this great man by the name of Paul at the time his name was Saul his, he's been changed from Saul to Paul and now he's become Apostle Paul and I love his story so much because the Bible is clear to say that he's written or he wrote rather a good a good majority of the New Testament in fact we call his collection of books the Pauline epistles they're the books that he wrote and many of the books that he wrote if not all the books that he wrote he wrote from a prison cell now I love this that he wrote it from a prison cell because it lets me know that even in confinement there's still room to produce and I love that many of the stories that he wrote and many of the books that he wrote from prison a lot of them start with the sentence I Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ write to you from so-and-so from Rome from you know wherever he was at the time and what that ministers to me and what I wanted to really minister to you is that even in the worst situation, Paul still finds a reason to say that he belongs to Jesus Christ. He boasting in the Lord by saying, even though I'm in prison, I'm in prison because of Jesus Christ. Even though I'm in this position that is impossible, I'm here because God is going to get glory out of it. And I prophesy to you watching this, watching this uh, station or watching this message tonight that the Lord is going to get glory out of your situation. That whatever situation you find yourself in, the Lord is going to get glory out of it. And so, Paul, like I said, many times writes these messages from a place and he begins by saying, I, Paul, write you this letter from prison as a prisoner of Jesus Christ. But I love God because uh, uh, many times the Lord will bring my attention not to just focus on the beginning of a thing, but also to focus on the ending of a thing. And the beginning of the story is, I, Paul, write to you from the prison cell. And then many times he would end the book or end the story with saying, remember my chains if you go through the scriptures even if you look at colossians you'll see that even in colossians the bible would of that that book would end with a statement remember my chains now that statement remember my chains ministers two things to me and if you're writing notes i want you to put these two things down the first thing that that ministers to me is that there is a bit of suffering when it comes to following jesus christ 
There is a suffering that comes when you follow Jesus Christ. It won't always be rosy, but there is an element of Christianity that is a suffering. That is the joy in suffering, as Paul would call it. But the second thing that this ministers to me is that even though I am in prison, remember my chains. In that, remember the fact that although I am in prison, I write to you from prison. I write to you from prison. I wrote it down so that it would be very easy for you to be able to follow my train of thought. I get this that, remember, I am writing to you while in chains. In other words, you can be physically confined, but creatively and mentally freed. You can be physically in a space where you cannot produce or you feel as though you cannot produce because you're not you don't you're not privy to a lot of things but mentally creatively and spiritually you can be free I in the name of Jesus speak to people right now who are watching from all over the world that are saying even though I've been physically confined I also feel as though I've been mentally confined and creatively creatively confined I speak to you to tell you one thing that even though you may be confined and that you can't leave your house it doesn't negate the fact that you cannot still be productive I'm seeing that people will come out of this season as millionaires people will come out of this season as great men and women and I believe that you are a part of the people that are going to come out of this season stronger than you entered it in Jesus name and why don't you go ahead and give the Lord a shout right where you are I don't know where you might be watching this from but wherever you're watching this from just give the Lord a mighty hand clap I hear the Lord in this place I love that although Paul is in chains the first part is remember that I suffer for the Lord. But I interpret it also remember that while in chains, I'm still pastoring you. While in a jail cell, I am still fathering people like Onesimus and like Philemon. While in jail, remember my chains. Not just the suffering, but remember that I write to you, I communicate to you. So that means that if there is a will, there is definitely a way. You know, my uncle um, in Ghana, I love him so much. He's a bishop there. And one time he came to Canada and he sat me down and he was talking to me about relationships. And uh, he said, you know, Kofi, this might have been four years ago. He said, Kofi, you know, in a couple of years, you're going to near the age of marriage where you want to settle down and you want to get into a serious relationship. He said, I want to sh tell you a story. I said, uncle, I'm all ears. I want to hear this story. You know what he said? He said, at the time, I was a hot cake. I said, uncle, you were a hot cake. He said, Son, I was a hot cake. He's like, you should have seen my Jerry curl. You should have seen. I mean, he's big too. He's like six foot three. Must, I mean, he's a good looking guy. And, I can, and now he's a good looking guy. I can only imagine 20, 30, 40 years ago. And he said, son, I want to tell you a story. I said, uncle, I'm ready for the story. He said, at the time, I had three women that were prospects. I said, uncle, you had three women? Said, I mean, that's, those are the ones that I narrowed down. I said, hey, uncle. He said he had three women who were prospects. And he said, you know what I did? I said, what did you do? He said, I gave each of the women 10 Ghana CDs. That's equivalent to $2.45 Canadian. And he said, I asked all of the ladies to give me a meal and make me a meal and bring it to me with 10 CDs. I said, uncle, you did that? He said, son, I did that. I said, okay, what were the outcome? He said, the first lady that I actually liked quite a bit, but, you know, I wasn't really sure, she came back and she told me, she said, the money wasn't enough. I said, the money, the 10 CDs wasn't enough? He said, yeah, she said the 10 CDs wasn't enough to make a meal. I said, what did you do? He said, I sacked her. I told her, never call me again. I told her, just stay in her corner. I'm done with her. I said, hey, uncle, you're brave. He said, I, he said son, I was serious about this. Then he said, then the second woman came. And I said, then what happened? He said, she brought me a meal with no change. And I said, uncle, what did you do? He said, I sacked her. He said, because I was looking for more than what she was able to bring to the table. Then I said, what did you do with the last one? He said, the last woman that came is one that I wasn't really too into, but you know, I said, I will give her a chance. And she came and brought me a meal and she made a meal with five Ghana CDs. And she gave me back five Ghana CDs change. And I told myself, she's the one. She never left and they've been married for over 20 years now. 
What am I saying by that story? I'm saying that even though Paul was in a position where he couldn't do a lot because he didn't have a lot in his reach, he was still able to be productive. My uncle saw that I'm not looking for somebody that can do a lot with a lot, but I'm looking for somebody that can do a lot with a little. Even though it may just be five Dana CDs, she came back with a meal and gave me back change so that I can reinvest. And so I speak to the person that's watching this. Even though you may be in the confines of your room, Room. don't forget your chains even though you may be confined in your room in your living room in your house you still have the ability to be productive I mean Paul wrote the New Testament a lot of the New Testament from a jail cell why can't you write the new code to change the world why can't you create the newest invention from your bedroom why can't you Bill Gates I'm sure came up with something from his bedroom how come you can't do it I believe I'm speaking to the next Bill Gates I'm speaking to the next Facebook owner I'm speaking to the next uh, uh, CEO owes of companies and corporations across the world he said son that's been my wife until now because I realized that she can do a lot with a little remember your chains remember your chains for some scriptural reference Philippians 4 teaches us verse 10 but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again though you sincerely and surely did care but you lacked the opportunity verse 11 not that i speak in regard to need for i have learned in whatever state that i am in this is paul i have learned that in whatever state that i am in to be content verse 12 i know how to be abased and i know how to abound or abound everything and everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full as well as to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me I want to speak to somebody you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you how are you gonna do it because Christ strengthens you but before Christ strengthens you there are some conditions that Paul said before he got to that conclusion he said that I've been able to do a lot with a little I know what it's like to be in my room but to change the world. I know what it's like to be in a prison cell and be able to still pastor so many, a network of churches. I know what it's like. I mean, until we get to the point where we only have letters, we're better than Paul. Until we get to the point where we're confined and we only have letters to be able to give people to make something, even at that, Paul changed the world. How much now with technology? How much now with internet? You can change the world. Remember your chains. Remember your chains. You know, the word abase literally means I've learned what it means to lower myself in rank. And the word abound literally means I've also learned how to be fruitful and how to hire myself in rank. And so there's an element even in, in knowing that, hey, even though I may be in a situation, if I have to lower myself, I know what it's like to bring myself down for the greater good. And I also know what it's like to magnify my office and know how to bring myself up to achieve the very end goal. I speak to you watching this right now. Don't forget that you have greatness on the inside of you. Don't forget that even though you're confined, remember your chains. Not just the suffering, but remember that Paul was able to still do a lot with a little. You have the ability to change the world from your bedroom. I leave you with four main things or so. Number one, in this season where you feel as though you've been segregated or you've been uh, you know, placed in confinement or you feel as though, man, we're in quarantine and we don't know what to do. We don't know how long this is going to last. Hey, shake that off and be able to say, if this is how the wind is going to blow, I'm going to adjust my boat so that the wind would be a benefit and not a curse. The wind would actually use me and care. I would use the wind to carry me instead of using the wind to crush my boat. And the first thing that I can tell you in this season is do a five-year plan. In this season where you have time, sit down, conduct a five-year plan, 
and, and break it down into different categories. Break it down into education. Where do I want to be educationally in terms of my education? Break it down in career-wise. What do I want to have achieved by the five years mark career-wise? Number three, break it down financially. What do I want to have achieved financially by that point? Uh, number four, relationally. What do I want to achieve in five years? Do I want to be married? Do I want to be engaged? Do I want to be in a serious relationship? Do I want to have ch uh, two children, one child by then? Do I want? You have to be able to write down the vision and make it plain. Do a five-year plan in this time. Number two, take advantage of the fact that there are dozens and dozens of jobs online that literally are looking for people to work remotely from right now. You can go online and you can pick up a simple job that allows you to be in your bedroom and still make uh, income that will be able to affect you and be able to impact you once this whole season is over. That's number two. Number three, begin to speak to somebody or develop a relationship or a friendship with somebody that you've been wanting or longing to develop a relationship with or a friendship with, but you just haven't had the time to do it. This is not the time just to be focused on one thing or the other, but you have to be focused on all things at the same time because we have the time to do so. And in all things, I also want to leave you with this last one. In this time, also focus and put uh, place an audit of your time. If you weren't doing this and you weren't on quarantine right now, what would you be doing? Have an audit of your time to say, man, I really have not been using my time wisely and effectively. If I didn't have all this time, how would I use it? I want you to sit down and do all of these things. Why? Because if Paul, while in prison, can have an impact on the world and an impact on Christendom, then you who are now and living in this day and age that has access to all of the technology that we have should be able to come out of this season picking up a new skill, learning a new instrument, learning a new language. There's no reason why you can't do these things in this season. You should be able to better yourself and come out of the season stronger than you entered into it. We've been prophesying it. We're going to come out of the season stronger than the time we entered it. But that won't come unless you sit down and you look at your life and say, this is what I need to do to change the world. If Paul sat down and said, hey, I won't be able to write this all myself, so I'm going to make sure that I have somebody that can write. Luke will come and write these things for me. He linked up with somebody that would help him achieve his purpose, and he still changed the world. You have the ability to change the world. I leave you with this message tonight. Remember your change. This is the start of a four-part series, four-part talk. We're going to talk about this until the ending of April, remembering our chains, how we can do a lot with just a little. Why don't you bow your heads and I pray for you for a couple of minutes. Father, we thank you that even in a moment like this, you would allow us to be able to dissect your word so that we can be blessed knowing that, Lord, even in the confines that, Lord, even in our worst state, greatness can still be created out of us. Greatness can still be brought out of us, oh God. That even though we are being pressed on every side, we are not yet destroyed. Thank you, God, for your peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray for those who are under anxiety attacks. I pray for those who are under deep depression. I pray for those even now who may have symptoms of the virus I pray that it would leave in the name of Jesus I thank you Lord for what you're doing in this season with our church Lord I pray that as we continue to thrive for your word that even though we are in our confines if Paul can make an impact from a prison cell then Lord we can make impact from our houses from our apartments from our condos from wherever we're watching from Lord hear this humble cry bless your people in the mighty name of Jesus, we've prayed. Amen. Hey, if this message blessed you in any way, I want to encourage you to like, subscribe, share one more time, and hey, partner with us. If you go to our website, www.campusrush.org, you'll see so many partnering options. We believe in the power of giving, and we believe that together we can change the world. We love you. Praying for you always, Pastor Go.